What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy, Nicholas. Today, we're going to do a mock draft. We are going to do it on playdraft.com. If you've watched my videos throughout the summer, you may or may not have heard me mention playdraft, and it's actually a best ball league. So what that means is you don't do anything within the season. All you do is draft your team and you don't have to check it again until the end of the year. For someone like me, you know, I get asked to join a lot of leagues and I try to keep it to like three or four leagues because if you, you know, if you're in like seven or eight season long leagues, it's really hard to keep on top of the waiver wire in every league and make sure that you're doing your best in all leagues. So I like doing play draft leagues and this is probably one of the best places to do a mock draft. Now they're not free, but you can enter a league for as little as three dollars so that's probably what we'll be doing today oh you can do one a dollar too so that's pretty cool and it's anywhere from uh two people all the way up to 12 people and it's not dfs it's not daily fantasy it's a whole nother thing it's called best ball it's just similar to mfl so you basically draft your team right now and each week the app automatically does your starting lineup so it's a quarterback two running backs three wide receivers a tight end i think a flex no kickers, no defense, so you don't have to worry about that. And you draft 18 players on your roster. And out of the roster, it automatically takes the best performers of each week. So it's a really cool way because obviously you're paying, even if it's a small amount of money, everyone that's in the draft is actually drafting for the best possible team. So you're not in a shitty mock draft. So you could spend a dollar, three dollars, and get like a realistic view of what it might be like. And these drafts are awesome because one, like I said, they're cheap. You could pick your league size. And you could do a fast draft or a slow draft. And what that means is 30 second picks. So it's really quick. The slow drafts are like eight hours in between picks. So it would take weeks to do. So if you're not like, you don't want to do it around your, um, in one sit down, you could do that as well. So we're going to join a $3 one today. And we're waiting for one more drafter to join and we'll get after it. Now, best ball differs from a season long league because there are guys that you would probably stay away from in a best ball league because maybe you are, you know, it's hard to differentiate sit and starts with guys like, you know, Ted Ginn, even like a Brandon Cooks to an extent because, you know, they rely on the long ball, which is, which is on and off. They need a big play in order to put up those wide receiver one or two numbers. And here, you don't actually have to decide who to sit or start, right? Whenever their best weeks are, they're going to be in the lineups. And those best weeks are going to be really good. So that's when you hear the term boom bust. That's what people are talking about. And those are the guys that are pretty valuable in leagues like this. We got the 10th guy. Oh, and this is interesting. So I have the fourth pick, which is good because we just heard the Zeke news yesterday. So I'm assuming the board is going to go David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Brown, and then you'll see who I take after that. And my strategy in these best ball leagues don't really... So you could see the rosters up here, how it's constructed. One quarterback starting, one tight end starting, two running backs, three wide receivers. But you can make a team of 18 guys. So my strategy is not really that different. It's half PPR too. My strategy is not very different in terms of drafting than I would in a regular league until we probably get to the later rounds when, you know, you're deciding between someone that could break out or someone that's going to give you like, would you rather have, I like Julio here over Odell. I think it's kind of splitting hairs. I think Julio's in the better situation. Odell, they brought in Evan Ingram. They brought in Brandon Marshall. Target numbers are probably going to dip a bit, but really Julio and Odell are 1A, 1B there. Well, 2A behind Brown, but oh, so at the end of your drafts, like right when you're maybe in a redraft league, you might be thinking like 12th, 13th round. Let me go with a guy like Jamal Williams, or let me go with a guy like Kareem Hunt, who has, you know, major upside if it breaks right. But in a best ball league, there is a decent chance that they never get that chance, you know, and they give you a dud every single week. Whereas in a redraft league, you can drop them. But here in like the 12th round or something, rather than going with like a Kareem Hunt, you can go with a James White, right? Who is not always going to be involved because the Patriots game scripts are very kind of weird, like on and off. But, you know, he definitely will have his like multiple touchdown games where he provides a lot of value for you. So that's the only real difference I would say. But otherwise, I'm kind of drafting how I normally would. And this is also best uh, play draft is an app too on your phone. So you could do this all from your phone. But obviously, I can't screen record on my phone. So I just figured I'd do it. I'm kind of interested to see where Zeke goes on the board here. Now, Zeke, we don't obviously is going to appeal. We don't know if it's going to be dropped. We don't know if it's going to linger on throughout the season because we remember with Tom Brady, right? He was supposed to be suspended and then it went on for like two years. Who knows? The best you can do is draft based on, you know, the knowledge we have at hand. If a report comes out today that says there's a 50-50 a chance of his appeal being dropped from six to four games, you know, you got to take that into consideration. Let's see if there's been anything out. ESPN's Adam Schefter reports is equal. Uh, boom. It's perfect. 
Zeke Elliott is ready for a long battle regarding his six-game suspension. Elliott has released a statement saying he will appeal the decision, but Schefter reports that might just be the first step in an ongoing deal, suggesting Zeke is willing to go to court to fight the ban. Elliott is worth a pick in the late second round, even with the suspension looming, but it remains possible he either serves a lesser ban this year or is able to postpone the suspension the entire season. Like Le'Veon Bell last year, Elliott will likely end up a value when it is all said and done. That's interesting because, you know, they could push the suspension completely into the season, through the season, in which he'll be, you know, fighting that in court, which obviously won't affect him in, you know, fantasy this year. Okay, so we had Zeke go off at 2-2. So he's going pretty early now. You can see people are still, people are expecting, I guess, like, you know, if you were a Le'Veon Bell owner last year, that's like what you're expecting to see, right? I'll get right back into that. My pick's next. Ah, I went Michael Thomas. Kind of wanted in there. You know, I don't have any shares of Gronk, so I'm going to go with Gronk here. Fully healthy. Probably stays that way. And I, yeah, you know what? A lot of people, especially, well, Bell owners and any fantasy players, I guess, because you saw what Bell did last year, right? Averaging 28 touches a game when he got back. I think everyone is, is seeing how incredible of a value, like you could have taken Bell second overall last year knowing he was missing a bunch of games and you still can't get ridiculed for it because of how good he was afterwards you also have to remember Le'Veon Bell is like the elite of the elite so while I do think Zeke is going to come back strong from the suspension I'm not going to be reaching into the I feel like people are going to start reaching into like the end of the first round but remember if he's missing six games with a first round pick you could be you could have a guy like a Melvin Gordon or a Devonta Freeman giving you six RB1 games for the regular season, as well as they're going to, it's not like they're not going to be there for the playoffs for you either. So you got to take that in consideration while Ezekiel Elliott, I know everyone's going to be getting like cute and get smart with the whole Ezekiel Elliott thing and keep raising his ADP until it like hits the first round again. But if he's out for six games, you can't take him in the first round. I said yesterday, if it's six games, the earliest I'm taking him, 19, 20, 21. And that's only if I have Le'Veon or David Johnson on my team already. Because if you have one of them, they pretty much ground your entire running back position like for those six weeks. They can they put up enough production that even if your RB2 is a bit of a fall off, it'll be fine. Gronk, TY. Interesting. I've never had Dez fall to me at this pick. And he's easily my the best value on the board here. It's all question marks after him. So I'm, I'll go with Dez here. And with Zeke out, I would expect them to let Dak uh, throw a little bit more. Even if he's less efficient, I'd see the total pass attempts rise a little bit. And that's got to be an increase for Dez. So I I'm not moving him up past Cooper, Baldwin, or any of those guys that I have rated above him. But I just think overall his outlook takes a little bit of a boost there. All right, so we started off two wide receivers and a tight end. This is not how I usually start off. I didn't even really realize I have two RBs. But you only need to start two running backs. So that means I could I could roster about six mid-round running backs, right? And it'll be starting my two top ones. So in essence, wide receiver is more important to draft here because there's three starting spots. So you need a little more depth there. Because, you know, if one of your guys get hurt in this league, you don't have a choice of dropping them and adding another roster guy. You just have to deal with it. And that's something to take into consideration with quarterback and tight end because you only need to start one, but you should draft more than one. Normally, I find myself taking three tight ends, three quarterbacks, and then a mix of 12 running backs, wide receivers. I'm interested to see how far Sammy Watkins falls. My outlook on Watkins, and again, I'll go over this in the wide receiver video of fantasy football advice so we discuss it pretty thoroughly he's definitely a downgrade going to the rams for sure Watkins excels on the deep ball when you look at his 2015 season he only played in 12 games but he had seven catches of 40 yards or more which was third in the nfl behind only odell and antonio brown despite him only playing in 12 games so he excels down the field and Tyrod, as a passer, he might not be the best passer overall, but him and Watkins had a really nice chemistry on the deep ball, where a lot of both of their production came from in terms of passing and receiving. Move over to the Rams, where you have Jared Goff, and who knows where the fuck his, product, uh, his deep ball accuracy is going to be. We barely got a sample size last year, and the sample size we did get was not good. So you see all these guys that are going above Sammy right now. I think that's about right. I had him as a late... Right, so we're deep into the fourth round right now. I haven't taken a running back yet, but... I'm going to do something else I haven't done. kind of want to take Tom Brady because he's falling far, but I also think Jordan, uh, Joe Mixon is a good pick in, in best ball because you know he will eventually take over that starting role and you don't have to, you know, do the sit starts for the first couple weeks. So even if he's a little down to start, he'll be there in the end. Ah, I wanted to get Brady. He didn't fall to me. But this is where it's tough if you don't get a running back early because there is so much more value on the board at wide receiver here than there is running back wise. Like I would take Watkins, Allen Robinson, Devonta. I would take basically 
all these wide receivers that you could see on the screen right now over Gillisley, Spencer Ware, Dal- I actually like Dalvin Cook. I might snag him. But back to Watkins. Yeah, you have Goff there, right, in the small sample size that we had last year throwing deep balls. He only threw like 16 deep balls and he had a 25% completion percentage, which was really bad. If you're taking that part of the field away from Watkins, which is, you know, it's hard to just project that that's being taken away because you don't know how accurate it's going to be, but that's going to be a a very significant downgrade to Watkins overall projection. I mean, he's still going to be the number one there, of course. I don't expect anyone else on that passing offense, Robert Woods, Tavon Austin, Cooper Cup, to take a significant number of targets away from Watkins. Ah, there goes Cook. But it's just hard to imagine him, first of all, staying healthy, second of all, putting up great numbers. So now we have still too much value on a wide receiver, I think, to to reach for a guy like Spencer Ware. I'm sure most of you guys watching this right now would agree. So there goes Watkins off the board. So I'm at round five, pick three. And that's probably where I would drop him down to. He was going late third for me, early fourth. Now he drops to a late fourth, early fifth. So probably right around here is where I would start looking at him. But there's a lot of other receivers I prefer. Tyreek Hill and Fitz are two of them. And right now, since my team is kind of risky, I have a lot of injured players between um, Julio Jones always banged up. Bryant's missed a few games the last few years. Gronk, of course, you already know. Mixon's a question mark, kind of. Rather than taking like a Tyreek Hill, who is more, I guess, boomer bust for a lot. I don't really think he's boomer bust, but for a lot of you guys would probably assume he's boomer bust. Fitz is a much safer play there. So I think he rounds out my wide receiver starting group pretty well. That's something to take into consideration. While I do always like to pick on value, and for the most part, I'll do best player available, even if my starting lineup is is picked, you do have to take into consideration the makeup of your team. You know, you want it to have depth, but you want it to be long lasting. You want to make sure that you kind of balance risk with reward and a floor with the ceiling and things like that. So, all right. So we saw a pretty big run of wide receivers there. And then you had a couple... Running backs go off the board. I am eyeing right now. If I didn't get a tight end, this is what I mean by waiting on tight end. Like, you can get Greg Olson in the sixth round, which is insanity. The running backs I'm looking at would be Danny Woodhead. I like CJ Anderson. Who else do we got down here? Amir. I'm going to go Danny Woodhead here. Another good guy for best ball. So right now, I mean, you're looking at my receivers and tight ends. My pass catchers are great. My running backs are a little weak. And I, I find that happening anytime, basically, I, I have a middle middle round first pick. So I'm praying in my big league this year I get one of the first two picks. My God, I would love that. Which naturally means I won't. But you say, like, I have my starting roster basically filled out, right? I mean, the quarterback, but again, I'm not going anywhere near a quarterback yet because you can wait like three rounds and then get a couple of these guys. Wait even longer, get Carr. Wait even longer, get Rivers, you know. So I'm still definitely thinking um, skill players here. And I would go by value on the board, most likely. So I'd probably be looking at Sanders, Crowder, Benjamin. I'm going to go with Benjamin here. I think after seeing him in the preseason game, if you've watched my videos on the Panthers, you know, I was, I'm was i an advocate for Benjamin. I think that he's the clear-cut outside wide receiver, you know, to own in Carolina. There's no one there to give him competition. Those fade balls, which we saw in the preseason game a couple nights ago, he looked really good, and he looked really good down there. So wouldn't be surprised to see a huge number of those passes. Plus, you know, we've seen the potential with Cam Newton and that offense. So he's almost a lock to get 115 targets as long as he stays healthy. Number one, he should easily grab seven, eight, even more touchdowns. So... I like Benjamin there. I was debating between Crowder, too, because I think Crowder has tremendous upside if Jordan Reed or Josh Oxen misses time, which I feel like is almost a guarantee at this point. But now the running backs start to get a little bit weaker. And out of the ones on the board, Martin, Lacey, Perkins, Gore, Blunt would be my favorite to own. And there's still... Got to keep scrolling down because Terrence West, you know, he's going to be the early down back there. And we saw the other night, he, he ran pretty well in the preseason game, scored a touchdown... And this is another thing. You can pair Terrence West with uh, Danny Woodhead, right? And it's not like, oh, dude, I don't want to start two running backs on the Baltimore. But you don't have to because it'll automatically start whatever one has the big game. And there's a good chance that if you have two productive running backs, each week one of them will have a good game. I do like Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson all the way down here. So if I can get Blunt and then one of them is still on the board on my next pick, I might look at them. You can get one of these guys at Winston even down here. Um, but I do have Wilson and Matt Ryan, like a, a huge tier ahead of those later round RB guys. All right. So we got our boy Blunt, Blunt dude. And if you have the app for this, you can, uh, oh, well one, you could add me. So if you can, if you go to your profile when you're on the app, 
you just type in my name right there, Nick Ercolano, and you could add me, and I think we could draft together. So go do that if you're interested. Uh, the app will, like, you know, if you're drafting, it'll vibrate your phone every time your pick is up, so you don't have to be staring at the app while you're doing the mock draft. Although, I'm assuming if you're in the mock draft, you're pretty into it. Anyways, so hopefully Wilson falls to me. I'd like to have him as my quarterback. Most This is, like, when I'd probably start looking at later-round quarterbacks, usually ninth. 10th round and later, but I see Wilson as like a seventh round pick this year. So if he can fall to me here, I'd, I'd be pumped. Ah, there goes Terrence West. Good for you, whoever drafted. He came in and knocked it on my face. Cobb, come on, one more. Give me our dubs. Give me our dub. Yeah. Give me him, boy. Jesus Christ, baby. All right, so we got our boy. So we got a quarterback. We got a tight end. We're going to need to stack up the running backs because... I don't have a great plethora of guys right here. You don't have to go three quarterbacks, three tight ends. I just think it's smart because you have to account for bye weeks and injuries. So if you have two quarterbacks, one of them is going to be on a bye week. And if the other one doesn't perform well, then you get like a dud in a position where assuming other teams have three quarterbacks, they're going to have someone who scores minimum 20 to 25 points. So my picks back up again. Take a look at the running backs on the board. Kareem Hunt, CJ Procise. I am going to have to go at Robert Kelly here because he's the only bona fide starter on the board. You look at what P. Ryan did this week in preseason. Drop pass, miss block, and a fumble. Like literally the three things that rookie running backs cannot do if you want to, one, have a spot on the roster, two, have any chance of playing early. Kelly's another guy I just throw in because I know he'll give me production at least for like the first six weeks. He'll have those starter numbers. This is probably the weakest group of running backs I've ever had in the in one of these drafts. But it comes at the, you know, at the price of getting solid mix of quarterback wide receivers and tight ends but that's what i've been saying i, I do like I, for the most part i like to get at least one possibly two running backs in the first three rounds oh man we are hurting right now i like terrell's value too much to reach down for uh i, I i'm gonna target thomas rolls next you could put players on your queue doyle's a possibility james white even can't get behind duke johnson right now quiz worst case scenario don't hate sprolls Rolls. That's my boy. I like Tyler Lockett in these drafts too. I find myself owning a lot of him really late in the drafts because he's a great, like think of his rookie year, how good of a best ball pick he would have been. He has his terrible weeks and he has his awesome weeks and now he's back. He's going to operate as that number two in Seattle, but you can get him for a 17th round pick. Oh, I am stupid. I totally forgot about Run DMC down here. Round 12. He would have been perfect on my team. As I talked about in my Zeke video yesterday, I'm, I'm okay starting to look at McFadden probably the seventh round likely later than that eighth ninth i'm probably okay with because remember you're only getting him for six games basically useless after that you're not gonna be able to use him for the playoffs so you're getting at best probably a high-end rb2 maybe if he's lucky a low-end rb1 like top 10 maybe top 12 numbers for six weeks i think thomas rolls will fall back to me so i'm gonna go with doyle here to pad my uh gronk and I am full. I know I had a lot of love for Doyle, but my uh, I'm getting scared with Andrew Luck and his injury. The fact that their line is just so shitty. Ryan Kelly's hurt, and there's I feel like there's a good chance he takes a ton of hits again this year, and and probably ends up injured again. All right, so I'll probably take whatever these three running backs fall to me. Uh, looks like they probably all will. Quiz is a good pick from. Ah, damn it, he went off. He would have been a good pick because if someone like Joe Mixon slowly gets eased into the role, I'm assuming by like week three or four. He will be their like clear cut guy, but Quiz will have those first three games where it's against not tough run defenses at all. Put up good numbers while Mixon kind of works his way up the depth chart. I'll grab Rawls here. There's been reports that you know he's working as the clear cut number one. Well, I don't believe that outright. He's definitely in a share with Eddie Lacy, and at this point in Eddie Lacy's career, I actually think Rawls, when healthy, is a more talented running back. I know we've seen it from Lacy. And Rawls can't stay on the field, but I, I, both of them are, have trouble staying on the field. And if I would take one straight up to be a workhorse right now, it would be Rawls over Lacey. And right now, I need as much upside at running back as I can get. Jonathan Williams is probably a good one for here, too. Same with DeAndre Washington. Williams, you know, playing that number two role in Buffalo has just always been money. Last year with Mike Gillisley, the year before with Carlos Williams. They were on the ball a ton, a good line, and they had plenty of scoring opportunities. So we should see Jonathan Williams get his get plenty of touches, and he looked really good in that first preseason game. Wow, interesting. Look at uh, Evan Silva's tweet. Someone asked him, what, what round are you drafting Zeke in? Burns roster spot, seven weeks, no guarantee, avoids trouble during ban. He's a fantasy pick for suckers. It's a strong statement there. Getting down to the last few rounds. Wow, there's not a lot of quarterbacks left either. I'm going to have to grab one of these quarterbacks here. 
because I don't have a backup right now, and Jonathan Williams will definitely last later into the draft. Like, I'm all set at wide receiver. I don't even think I need to draft, draft another guy. They all have separate bye weeks. Oh, God, I'm going to be hurting at running back. I ain't going to lie to you guys. It's okay. That's why you do these for a dollar, three dollars. You don't have to set any lineups, and you check back at the end of the year, and you just you just rake in your winnings. Okay, back up 15th round to my second QB. Look for value on the board if we could find any. At this point, you're not finding much. Let me see if any names kind of stick out to me. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Jonathan Williams. And then I like DeAndre Washington here if he holds. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with, oh, nice, I picked another back with a six-week buy. And I'm going to go with another running back here to top off my roster. So if you're really interested in uh, possible outcomes for Zeke, like what might happen, what might not, just found a great Twitter thread. If you are following me on Twitter, or if you're not following me on Twitter, you should definitely go do that. Here's my Twitter handle right here, BDGE, AT Fantasy. And I just tweeted it out. Anyone that wants to know exactly what might happen, the guy tweeted out and basically went down all the options. So you could just click on this and he does the thread as it goes down and he tells you exactly what might happen in terms of legal, in terms of punishment. And then he could still get off legally or deal with the courts later and then Cadell can put him on the exempt list or whatever that list was that like Adrian Peterson was on. So he's still getting paid, but he's still suspended. And it's kind of like what Brady did, I guess. And it just show, goes to show you that Goodell can basically do whatever he wants, even if there's nothing wrong legally. Let's go Vereen. I think he'll give you some good PPR weeks. I don't even have a good logical explanation for why I would pick him over any of these guys up here. Probably should have went Rex Burkhead. There's two rounds left. I'll uh, show you what my final roster, roster looks like at the end. So here's the final team. I went with three quarterbacks. I decided to go with three quarterbacks instead of three tight ends because I'm just overall a quarterback just puts up more points, right? So if you're going to miss out on one of the positions, say something does happen and one guy gets injured so you only have the other guy, uh, you'd rather, you know, have the points coming from the quarterback than the tight end because they're obviously going to put up probably double the amount of points. Then you look at my skill players. Now I have a long list of running backs. I'm kind of just hoping one of them or if so you really only need, I guess, two of them. Two of them. I think between Mixon, Woodhead, Blunt, Kelly, and Rawls, I'll be able to get two running backs with productive weeks on, on a normal basis. And then between my wide receivers, I probably probably should have stacked one more wide receiver just in case for depth. But I think we got a really good group here, really solid. That's why I keep saying I think you should go with at least one, maybe two running backs in the first three rounds because what happens is, you know, you find yourself, if you go heavy on wide receiver in the beginning, like I did Julio, Dez, and Gronk, you know, you get to those middle rounds where the value at wide receiver and even at tight end is so much better than running back. But because you already started loading up on wide receivers, tight ends, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I feel like I need to get my running back spots filled up and I need to make sure that I get guys when in, in reality, there's so many better players at receiver than there are at running backs in round like five, six, seven. So kind of my final thoughts. So if you enjoyed the video, please scroll down a little bit. Give it that thumbs up. If you missed out on my draft guide, it is up for purchase on my website. I made a video about how to go get it. 50 pages, a lot of info. Hearing really good feedback on it, so I'm happy about that. Thanks, guys, anyone who purchased it. Just go check my channel out for everything else. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see y'all next time. Big Dolls got eight. Peace.